Dr. Dave Mark was here and I wanted to talk to you about something that we deal with every single day of our life in a variety of different ways and that has to do with stress. Probably the most common complaint across the board that people present to physician's office for is fatigue and fatigue has so many trickle-down causes that one of the things that I often see is that an individual is mismanaging all the stuff that they've got coming on them in a day and when it comes time to rest they simply can't. Sometimes people's brain won't turn off at night. Sometimes they, as try as they might, they can't focus. They just got all that noise spinning around in their head. They don't really realize that that is not just unique to them. Almost everybody is suffering from variations on that theme. And depending on an individual's genetic makeup and lifestyle, it might present in, in unique ways, but the commonality is mismanagement of stress. And so I wanted to share with you a common pathway that we have found here at Pathways to Health to really help people get a handle on that so that they can not only understand that root cause, but make a change and actually own the ability to regulate their body's response to stress so they're not always reacting to stress. So one of the biomarkers that we look at when someone comes in is called their tissue saturation versus their tissue, tissue perfusion. And so we'll, while we're doing their, their vital statistics, we get their um, blood pressure, their heart rate, and their tissue saturation, which means how much oxygen they actually have available to them on their hemoglobin. And then that second number, perfusion, is how much of that oxygen is actually getting put into the cell. So there's a difference between your saturation and your perfusion. That differential there speaks a lot about how well an individual is managing this concept called the autonomic nervous system. And I have a whole nother video about that one. This one is really about how to regulate and control that autonomic nervous system. So when I see somebody come in and their O2 saturation is sitting around 98%, that's good. That's right where they want to be. You want 2% wiggle room at all times so you can exchange your CO2 and oxygen. But that same person, instead of perfusing at rest about 30% of their available oxygen, which was what we should be doing, they might come in at like 1% or 2%. And you realize that, oh my gosh, they're sitting here in the chair. They look fine outwardly, but their brain is oxygen starved right now. And you wonder why sometimes we just don't get the information when it's coming at us. Well, if your brain's oxygen starved, you're going to miss out on a lot of things in life and you'll feel anxious throughout the day because you're always trying to catch up. Under challenge, that's when you have somebody actually do a little bit of activity. Your body's actually designed to take your available oxygen and deliver it on demand. But some people, when they're mismanaging this autonomic nervous system, you find that their ability to perfuse that saturated oxygen really doesn't step up much. It should go to 99% for at least a minute. That, that, that's how we run away from the lion, tiger, or bear. That, that's a normal sympathetic nervous system response. But some people can't step up and make that happen. So what we like to do is an autonomic nervous system evaluation. And through the process of heart rate variability, you can actually do that. You can, you can evaluate how efficiently an individual is managing their heart rate and respiration and through that avenue, deliver oxygen to the body. Because when somebody comes in having anxiety, panic attacks, insomnia, invariably they're poor O2 perfusers. A matter of fact, low O2 Perfusion is correlated in 90% of the cases of anxiety and panic attacks. So it's really low hanging fruit. I mean, this is something that everybody could learn about and own if they just understand their uniqueness. And therein lies the work. And it's not a lot of work. It just takes an evaluation 
where you hook yourself up to an EKG, a respirator, that pulse ox, and you sit with one of the techs and you're just chatting. And they're kind of monitoring what your body's doing during that 15 minute talk just to see how often you sit in fight flight versus rest and digest. And if you have the ability to regulate yourself, most people don't. Most people have either given up and they're stuck in that rest and digest state where, you know, things will just roll over them or they're stuck in fight flight where everything is perceived as an assault. If you're stuck in a state where everything is perceived as an assault, you will feel anxious on a daily basis and usually at the worst times. So I encourage everybody to take the time to find a practitioner that will evaluate their autonomic nervous system. Go through this simple process of evaluating your heart rate variability and figure out where you're at on that continuum because there's so many tools. Many of them are built into our phones where we can actually use our phone as a, a biofeedback marker where daily you could practice your own breathing and monitor your heart rate and tissue perfusion and get an idea where you're at and how successful you are. Many times we hear that, oh yeah, you're not breathing. Oh, okay, I'm gonna breathe. <gasps> well, that didn't do anything for you. And you, it's just like telling somebody to sit up straight. Well, if you don't teach them the underlying mechanism of, of why something's gone wrong, why their posture has gone wrong, and give them the exercises to actually correct that, telling somebody to sit up straight or take in a deep breath or just breathe, it's useless. It's useless information. It might be the ultimate right answer, but getting there is gonna be unique to you. So realize that there's answers out there. Autonomic nervous system testing is one of those avenues. It's a key avenue that helps you to understand oxygen, how vital it is to you. It's not overrated. We all got to breathe. Your brain uses 25% of what you're pulling in. And if you're not distributing it appropriately, you're going to feel anxious. You're going to have adverse symptoms related to how you interact with people and how you in interact with your environment. I hope this is helpful to you, and I hope you take the time to look into heart rate variability, autonomic nervous system testing, and learn how to practice that. It doesn't take but maybe a month and a half of you practicing, and you'll own it, and it'll be part of you, and your O2 perfusion is going to go up, and you'll feel better for it. Have a great day.